first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day, eighth day. And now guys, we are finally here. First and second Peter were written by none other than, of course, Peter himself, you know. And Peter wrote these letters, these two letters, to the churches that would be constantly persecuted, that were facing challenges on a daily basis, you know. And it's amazing also because in these two letters, we can see first, our reason for the suffering, second, our actions while we are suffering, and third, our hope in the suffering. First Peter 1 verses 4 to 7 say, To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Then further on in First Peter 2 verses 21 through 25 it says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example. So that you must follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was to see found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were stolen like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Suffering is something that will happen to all of us, you know, and I mean all of us with a Christian or not. And as I said earlier, well, not earlier, in part one, you can choose to suffer something, you know. And if you haven't watched part one, I recommend you watch it so that you can understand. But, yeah, suffering will happen to everyone, you know. And especially because in this world, we are meant to follow Jesus' steps. And as I just read, Jesus suffered even though he was blameless so of course we are going to suffer but something that is very important to keep in mind is what first peter 3 verse 17 says for it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be god's will than for doing evil second peter 1 verse 10 to 11 say everywhere is greater than diligent from the common and ancient they read that this is going to say this way there will be a chief of life for your entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, suffering is not an easy thing, and I am not trying to say that it is at all. But while we are in this world, we must do our best to follow a common plan. And it's not easy. Um, and as I said, the very core of that common is to follow Jesus' footsteps. And it's not easy, you know. But these letters show us some guides on what to do, and better yet, on how to follow a calling, sorry. So, I'm going to read some of them. Starting first with 1 Peter 3, verse 8 to 9, when it says, Finally, all you have made with mind, sympathy, worthy work, a tender heart, and a humble hand. Do not pay evil for evil, or violent for violent. But on the contrary, bless what to those who called Blessing. Then further, in 1 Peter 3, verse 15, it says, But in your hearts, honor Christ, the Lord is holy, always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, who prepares in you, and do it with gentleness and respect. That is very important, right? It is the very core of the relationship with God and life in general, you know? And it's not easy sometimes, but that is so important. Another thing that is definitely very important is that we will be able to demonstrate our faith when the time comes. And it's not easy, and it is scary, you know. But we must do our best to do it. And we must do it with gentleness, with respect. Because if we were to do it in a rude, disrespectful manner, we'd be putting a bad name to God and to Christians as a whole. Second, First Peter 4, verses 7 through 8 says, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self controlled and so reminded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers the multitude of sins. Again, love is crucial, you know. And I know it's not easy, especially for those who grew up in a house and a place in general 
where love was not unaccepted or shown, and he grew up in a place that love was not seen at all, or even betrayed at some point in their lives. Love is not accepted. But when you come to God and give yourself to Him, do trust that God can, and you should be able to love Him, because God is true love you now. And following Christ is not at all easy. You can see that a lot in the Bible and in our day to day lives. It is very much worth it. Worth it. So do remember what it says in 1 Peter 4, verse 12. When it says, Beloved, when you visit Christ at the fire trial, when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange would happen to you, but rejoice and so far as you share Christ's sufferings, then you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Third, 2 Peter 2, verse 1 says, The false prophets also rose among the people, just as there will be false, just as there will be false teachers among them, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who brought them, who brought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. While we go through our travels or not, you know, the enemy will try to attack us and misguide us, using false teacher temptations or whatever it is. Because when we are in these trials, our emotions tend to be out of control. And that is why it's very important to control ourselves in the way as well. But when we are out of control, it is most likely to fall into its traps. So, even though it's not easy, we must be always do our best to trust God, to have less self control, and to do what it says in 1 Peter 5, verse 6 to 8, when it says, Humble yourselves in the fourth under the mighty hand of God. So that the proper time he makes of you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. Be simply minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, comes around like a lion, seeking someone to a divine. If we can learn to humble ourselves to give our life and promise to God, God will guide us. God will show us the way. You know, and God will give us a new heart and perspective to combat the enemy and the things of our life. Suffering is not easy, and there's definitely going to be many types of suffering in our lives, many different types of sadness and hardships. But despite all that, God gives us a constant hope, you know? And part of that, I already mentioned earlier in this video, which is the eternal inheritance, you know, which is given a pure love and a sacrifice for us. But also further, in 2 Peter 2, verse 9, it says, then the Lord knows how to receive the God away from Charles, and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. Now, <laughs> all the, you know, you know, all the, all the saving take time, all the in internal inheritance take time, that is yes. But that doesn't mean that won't come, and it doesn't mean that God is taking too long. It was actually as quite the opposite. God being more than patient. And we can see that in 2 Peter 3, verse 8 and 9, when it says, But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slow as a fool's promise, as some kind of stories, but is patient toward you, not wishing that you should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God is more than patient for us. He is just waiting for that perfect time. Oh, no, wait. Here we did it, and we have to wait for that perfect time. Because when that time occurs that he intended to, it will come out so amazingly, and we, you will be so grateful and in awe, which is something that's truly amazing. So just find him hard and ignore him just sometimes. We must learn to wait for that. Because trust that he will carry you through whatever it is that you will go through. I hope you all learned something from these videos and this whole message as a whole. It was definitely a different type of video and it was hard for me to make, but I'm glad that I did it. It was, it could have been better than saying that it couldn't, but it was an experience and I'll use it for whenever I do something like this in the future maybe. Not entirely sure, but yeah.
with your injuries. And I don't know who this is for, or even who you are on the other side of the screen. But when a brother or sister in Christ, or even if you don't believe in God, God loves you. God will guide you through whatever it is that you're going through. And you're not telling me anything. But God knows. And you, He's already made a way for you. You just have to keep trusting Him and come to Him. Because He indeed loves you. See you on the next one. God bless you.